I read the news today, oh boy, about a lucky man who made the grade. Hey, it's Nate with another piano tutorial. Today I'm going to be doing A Day in the Life by the Beatles. I've gotten a few requests for it, and it also happens to be one of my favorite songs of all time. I've honestly been a little bit intimidated to do it because it's such a classic song and I want to do it justice. And a tricky thing about teaching Beatles songs is people know them so well and every detail of a song will be something that somebody loves. But if I were to just go through and teach step by step every single detail in the recording, I think it would be overwhelming. There is piano on the Beatles recording. It's often playing a support role to the acoustic guitar and the bass line is also super important to the song. So a good solo piano version is going to incorporate elements from all three of those instruments. I think I've come up with a really good balance. At each step of the way, I'll show you the basic chords and rhythms to get you playing each section quickly. Then I'll go back over it again and fill in some details that are more optional or might be too advanced for some players. With all that said, let's just get into it. So let's start out with the intro, and I recommend getting the chords and lyrics chart. I put a link down in the description, and that'll help you follow along and see where the chords line up with the words. Here's the chord progression for that intro. Big picture, we're in 4-4 time, kind of a medium, slow feel, um, and that means that there's four counts in each one of those measures. So we're gonna start out with a G major chord. Normally we might do a G major like that. We're gonna have it inverted up one like that. So it's gonna be B, D, and G, and the left hand's just gonna do a single bass note on the root, the, the note that the chord is named after. So left hand's playing a low G there. So that's for the first half, the first two counts of that measure. Then we're gonna move to a B minor. Now left hand's gonna go to a B, right there, and then all you have to do in the right hand is change that G to an F sharp. So B, D, F sharp. Next we've got an E minor. Thumb in the left hand can play that E bass note. We're gonna do an inversion on an E minor chord here in the right hand with G, uh, B, and E. Now when it changes to an E minor seven, all of that can stay the same except we're gonna take this E here and bring it down to a D. So, so far we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And on the Beatles recording, this part is played on acoustic guitar and it's kind of strumming eighth notes like ding, 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 ding. So that's thinking about the spaces in between the counts. So one and two and three and four and. So I'm just gonna do that with my right hand, but just make sure to do it lightly so it doesn't get too overwhelming. The beginning is still pretty quiet. Now we get to this part. So we've got two measures here of C major. Um, I'm gonna start doing octaves in the left hand. This is where the electric bass comes in on the recording. So it starts to get a little bit more deep and powerful. Um, if you can't stretch the octave, any of those Cs is fine. And in parentheses, I wrote major seven cause they just kind of throw in the B which makes it a major seven there on one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Um, so it's just, you can do both the C and the B at the same time, and it's on the and after two. Finally, you'll notice I put an asterisk on the last C here. Throughout the song, there's a few moments where it'll be on a C chord, and then it'll suddenly go, or do some, some rhythms on inversions of C up higher. Um, so anytime that happens, I'll put a little asterisk, and you'll know to do that. And they do it a few different ways. I would say you can kind of improvise it a bit. Uh, if you know how to do inversions, um, it can be fun to play with that. I'm probably gonna do an inversion of a C here that's a E, a G, and a C, like that. Like, to end the intro section. But it'll sound just as good if you just go to like a regular root position C up there. So let me play the whole intro one more time. the 
the new. So we are in the first verse. So I think of it as being three verses in this song, each one starting with a, I did something, oh boy. And the first verse is a little different. It's nearly twice as long as the second and third verses. Those two have the exact same structure, but they all start the same way. Here's the first line. We've got a G major chord, but unlike the intro where we're doing that inversion, we're just gonna do a root position. So G, B, D. And in the intro, I did it with my, uh, the left hand bass note with my pinky. This time I'm gonna do it with my thumb because we're gonna be moving down. So we've got that G major chord. Then we've got a B minor over F sharp. So the note that comes after the slash is our bass note. So it's gonna look like that. The left hand plays that F sharp. The right hand's gonna do F sharp, B and D. So it's just that bottom note kind of walking down. Then we've got an E minor seven. So the left hand bass note is just gonna keep walking down to E here. For the right hand, we can just keep doing basically that G major chord. That's the full E minor seven, but we don't need to hear the E twice. So I'm just gonna do G, B, D here with my right hand. And then in the second half of that measure, we've just got uh, E minor seven over D. So we can just keep the right hand doing the same thing and let the left hand walk down to a D bass note. So that's gonna be G to B minor over F sharp, E minor seven, E minor seven over D. Now we come to this C. So left hand just keeps walking down and the C is gonna be just like we were doing before. You can keep your right hand thumb on that G and just move the top two notes up for the C and E. So we've got C to Almost there to the end of the line. Um, I ran out of fingers here. Uh, there's lots of different ways you could finger this left hand part, but I'm just gonna kind of just move my hand down so I can get to this B for that E minor over B. From that C, the only note I needed to move was to bring that C down to a B. And that's the uh, E minor inversion that we had done in the intro. And then finally, we are at this A sus two. So left hand steps all the way down to A. Oh, I love this chord. Um, that is E, A, and B in the right hand. I'm gonna play that line one more time, and I'm just gonna start adding just a light quarter note pulse in the right hand, so just one gentle chord on every count. I read the news today, oh boy, about a lucky man who made the grave. So you'll notice there on the ASUS 2, I just started doing eighth notes in the left hand, made the grade. Uh, throughout this song, Paul McCartney's bass line is super cool. It's really playful. He plays a lot with um, sometimes being more bouncy and sometimes just chilling out. So I'm gonna try to do some of that, but I'm sure he was really just being loose with it when he laid it down. I think you can be loose with it as well. And I'm sure you're hearing it in your head here, the uh, made the grade. So that part is really cool. We're just going back and forth between a B and a C and an A. Technically it's 16th notes like one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, but you can probably figure that out by ear and it doesn't do it the same way every time. I think the first time it might just go and definitely one of the later times it's like, so you can play around with it. Let's move on to the next line. So the chord progression in the next line starts really similar. We've got a G, a B minor, E minor seven, and so on. Now notice it's not B minor over F sharp this time. We had just climbed all the way from this G all the way down to this super low A, and we're gonna actually go down and start on the G way down here for this part. And though the... Then for this B minor, you're still gonna just drop the thumb in the right hand, but the left hand's gonna go up and actually do a B bass note. I know some of you might be playing on a smaller keyboard or some pianos, when you get down that low, it doesn't sound very good. So if that's you, um, you could totally just do the bass line up on this G like we did in the last pass. So I'm gonna go. And though the news was rather sad. So just like before. Just like before for that C. Well, I just, now we've got this F. So we're gonna go up to an F bass note here. I'm gonna do it with my thumb. Love this chord too. And then for the right hand, we're just gonna kind of pivot upwards here. And we've got an A, a C, and an F there for that. Had to laugh. Now we're going back to E minor here. Um, just a regular E minor, not E minor seven. So G, B, E, and step down to E minor over D. Then we do that C to F thing again. I saw the photograph. Back to 
the E minor, then finally down to C. One more time on that line. And though the news was rather sad, well, I just had to laugh. I saw the photograph. Now, it keeps going around, it goes back to basically like the first line, and it's gonna sound like this. He blew his mind out in a car. So just like before, he didn't notice that the lights had changed. One little detail in the recording that's maybe worth mentioning is this time when it goes from the E minor 7 to the E minor 7 over D, it only steps down to the D on the last count of that measure. So it's like, blew his mind out in a car, two, three, four, one. He didn't. Anyway, now we've got a line that starts just like the second line did. A crowd of people stood instead. So that's with the stepping up to there. Stepping down to the D. Then we do that C to F thing one more time. They'd seen his face before, but this time it only does the C to the F once. We're gonna go directly to an E minor. So G, B, E. Nobody was really sure if E minor over D. He was from the House of Lords. And C there on Lords, and that ends the first verse. Notice this C has an asterisk on it. That means we're gonna do that cool rhythm with the inversions, if you want. Lords. Or you could do Lords. Or, you know, play around with it. Now, before we go on to the second verse, I wanna go back on that and talk about the bass line a little bit. We don't need to have the left hand play everything that Paul did on the bass, but there's some little details that I really like to throw in. So just from the beginning of that verse, I read the news today, oh boy. Now, the detail right here, I probably will not do, but it's something like, oh boy. So I'm not gonna play that part, but I'm really attached to the bass line in the next part. It's gonna sound like this. And though the news was rather sad, well, I just had to laugh. So main thing here is just the passing notes in between chords. So when we have, and though the news, just between the G and the B for the B minor, you're just gonna walk up to A. One, two, and on the eighth note there, one, two, and three, four, and one. So once again, a passing note, this D on your way to E. And then here's that cool hooky moment. One, two, and three, and four, and one. So it's E, D, A, B, C. And then finally, there's a passing E on the eighth note on the way into the F chords. Well, I just had to laugh. I saw the photograph. And throughout the song, anytime it's doing that C to the F, it's gonna do that passing E. And it's interesting, that melody that I really like, the ba, da, 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 it actually only happens this very first time in the first half of the first verse. Uh, in the second half of the first verse, and then every other verse, it doesn't do it. It just does the simple walk down to D. Kind of interesting. So I'm just going to play through that whole verse one more time. I read the news today, oh boy, about a lucky man. And though the news was rather sad, well, I just had to laugh. I saw the photograph. face 
before Nobody was really sure if he was from the House of Lords so let's look at the second verse. The first line of the second verse and most of the second line is the same as the first verse was. Different words, of course, but now he's watching a film instead of reading the news. I saw a film today, oh boy. The English army had just won the war. So still the same. This next line is different in that it's gonna just do the B minor over F sharp for that, rather than going all the way down to the G here and up to the B. We're just gonna take it like we did at the first line of this verse. So we've got a crowd of people turned away. It's kind of an interesting thing. This is gonna be the same case for the third verse as well. It's just every time you have the B minor, it's over F sharp instead of doing the G up to F sharp. So we've got a crowd of people turned away. Then we do the C to F thing. But I just had to look. And then, so that's the same. And then we have, now we're going to having read the So that's E minor, having read E minor over D, and then the book is C, and it just hangs out on that same inversion of C before doing, I'd love to turn you on. So yeah, this section is very cool. And as we're getting into that section, there's this little random kind of two four measure of c the way i hear it, it's like having read the book two three four i'd one two for love two and then we're kind of in this next one two three four one two so the i'd love to turn you on section the right hand is just going to do a b and an e the whole time i have it written as like e minor over whatever the bass line is and this is kind of like an implied E minor chord. If we added that G in, you would hear it a little better. First, we've got the E minor over F sharp for two beats. Then E minor over G for two beats. E minor over A for two beats. Once we get to E minor over B, that's when the singing is over. Um, I'm gonna start doing octaves. And then E minor over C. E minor over D. E minor over D sharp, and then you can either go straight into the bridge on the recording it's like they do the long climbing up i'm going to show you how to do that but let's save that for the end i'm going to keep it just because i don't have a room full of strings and horns i'm going to keep it a little bit uh tighter for my piano version so after i do the e minor over d i am just going to do e here so just e minor over e and just kind of smudge it a little bit for a second just kind of for a few beats before dropping into the bridge which we'll do in a second i'm going to play through all of verse two one more time a few other details you'll notice on the recording the piano starts going like i saw a film so that's like one and two and three and four and that's totally optional because the piano is doing it but the acoustic guitar is still just kind of doing the same feel it's been doing so up to you once it gets down to the c i'm gonna just return to the straight up quarter notes also for this i'd love to turn you i am gonna do just like a pulsing eighth note feel one and two and three and four, like that i saw a film today oh boy the english army had just won the war So you can do that rhythm there again. But I just had to look, having read the book, I'd love to turn you Smudging it a little bit on that E there. A couple measures, and then we've got. 
then we're, we're in the bridge. So let's talk about that bridge. So for this middle section, a few things have changed. Not only has it gone from John Lennon singing to Paul McCartney singing, but also the tempo is about twice as fast. Not quite twice as fast, but we're in a real snappy pace now. It's also changed keys. We've been in G major with just the F sharp to now we are in the key of E major with four sharps. And when the bridge hits just at that new speed, we're just pulsing on this E major chord. So left hand, I'm just gonna do octaves on E. Again, you can totally just do single notes if you need to. And then in the right hand, I'm gonna do an inverted E major chord, B, E, and G sharp. And the bridge starts with just four measures, just pulsing on those quarter notes, then three more measures of that E when the vocals start. So we've got one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, two, three, four, four, two, three. Woke up, fell out of bed, dragged the comb across my head. So chord changes there. I did just kind of play around with going down low on the octaves for a second. Uh, Paul's playing around with the bass octave in that section. Then we've got a D sus two chord. So we're gonna step down to D in the left hand and I'm gonna do a A, a D and an E together here. There's a lot more to that moment rhythmically. I'll get to that in a bit. Then after another measure of E, we've got this B nine sus four. Sounds like a really crazy chord. So we're gonna do B bass notes here. Here's the notes the right hand's gonna play. Uh, uh, e, F sharp, A, and C sharp, really colorful chord. Then we also have this moment where it just resolves down to a regular old B, and we're just gonna do two notes in the right hand for that. It's gonna be a D sharp and an F sharp. So before we get into the more complicated details, I'm gonna just play through that first half of the bridge once the vocals start. Woke up, fell out of bed, dragged a comb across my head. Found my way downstairs and drank a cup. And looking up, I noticed I was late. Come on. And then we keep going there. But there's no new chords for the rest of that bridge section. So let's take it a step further in the complexity. So for this D sus2 moment, I'm going to do it in two steps. Um, the first is going to be the easier version. And I would think that a lot of you would want to do it this way. It's going to sound like this. So we're breaking it into this rhythm. One, two, and three, four. One, and two, three, four. Again, one, two, and three, four. One, and two, three, four. And the left hand is doing this bass line where it does the root, the fifth, which is A, and the octave. Root, fifth, octave, fifth, root, fifth. Drag the comb across my head. I think that sounds really good. Now on the recording, there's a little bit more going on on the piano, and I wanted to just touch on that briefly. It's gonna sound like this. Basically just sounds like they're riffing on an arpeggio using those three notes that we were doing on eighth notes, just circling around up and back. A, D, E, so one and two and three and four and, but then sometimes you hear a high E. So I did one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. At the end, it feels like it just slows down. It just kind of does. Dun. I think if you are going to add this part in, the most important thing is just to use these notes and get in an eighth note rhythm. I think any order you do is gonna sound pretty good. And that moment, the two measures of D sus two happens twice in the bridge. In my final playthrough at the end, I'm gonna do it once the easier way and once the harder way. So after the first of the D sus two sections, that's when we start getting that walking bass line. That's the. Basically, when it's going back and forth between the E and the B9 sus4, you're just gonna do this stepping down on every quarter note. E, D sharp, C sharp, C, B. So you get four notes on your way down to the destination of B. One, two, three, four. 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 And the right hand rhythm in there gets a little bit more complicated. We've got one and two, three, four. So it's one and two, three, four. Together, right, left, together, but left. Ba -da -da -da. And then when you get to that B9 sus4, the right hand continues to do kind of a more syncopated rhythm. The left hand can just pulse on the Bs, but the right hand is going to do one and two, three, four. 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 
If you are gonna do this full on rhythm for your version, you probably wanted to spend a lot of time just really slowly getting a hang of that rhythm until you've got the muscle memory to speed it up. For the B chord, we can just do quarter notes on the two notes and it's pretty gentle like. And looking up, I noticed I was late. Found my coat and grabbed my hat. So for this part, we've got th these three measures of E in a row, and we are going to do a walking bass line on that. It's not going to include that C natural, though. It's just going to be one and two, three, four, one and two, three, four. So just quarter notes in left hand, continuing that syncopated rhythm in the right. One and two, three, four, one and two, three. Made the bus in second flat. Now we've got this section. Or... Found my way upstairs and had a smoke. So this is just like before when you're doing the full walk down. This time we don't do the B though. It just does two times back and forth between the E and the B9 sus4. I'm gonna play that whole bridge one more time with each version of the D sus2. Woke up, fell out of bed, dragged a comb across my head. Found my way downstairs and drank a cup And looking up, I noticed I was late Found my coat and grabbed my hat Made the bus in seconds flat Found my way upstairs and had a smoke And somebody spoke and I went into a dream so now we are in the interlude section. When you hit this interlude section, suddenly the tempo drops way back down to the slower one we started with. And here's the chord progression. Pretty simple, it's just one chord per measure. It starts on a C. And throughout this, I'm just gonna do octaves in my left hand on the bass notes. You could do single notes. But so we've got a C, the same way we've been doing it for the verses. So G, C, E. So we've got C, two, three, four down to G. So G, we're just doing root position. Your thumb can stay in the same place. G, two, three, four. I'm gonna go up to D in the left hand. Uh, this is a D major chord with the F sharp. So it's gonna be uh, A, D, F sharp. And just like when we went from the C to the G, we can keep our thumb here and just kind of collapse down for this A. So that's going to be A, uh, D flat, and E there. Now we've got this E. Um, I'm going to go up to the E octaves, and then we've got a A flat, B, and E there. Two, three, four. Now back to the C back to the G. So it basically just does this progression again. And then except when you get to the A, I put a little asterisk on this E. It does go to an E here, but it plays a melody instead of doing the chord. It's going to sound like this. So that was three notes happening at a time. Octaves in the left, single notes in the right, but all playing the same notes on E, two, D, C, four, D. So the counting there is like one, two, and three, four, and, and then you can land on a G for the first beat of the next measure, which is the beginning of verse three. I'm gonna play that whole interlude again. I'm gonna add just a little bit more rhythm in my left hand, like one, two, and three, uh, just to give it some more movement. There's. I might even do just some pulsing eighth notes sometime. Paul's bass line here is definitely pulsing along. There's a little bit more going on with the bass line on the recording, like. I think that's a little bit complicated for this section when it's just on piano. I'm just gonna focus on the singing and keep the left hand a little simpler. Uh,
else. So that is getting into verse three now. Structurally, verse three is exactly like verse two. Really, the only difference on the chord chart is that I put an asterisk after the first C before the two four measure of C because you are gonna do some of those higher C hits. Now they know how many holes it takes to fill the upper hole. And the one other difference is the piano on the recording when this verse first hits is doing a little bit more of a complicated rhythm. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. But once again, just like the second verse, when you get to the C, it mellows out to just the straight up quarter notes. Now we're getting into that end section here. So after, I'd love to turn you. After I get up to D sharp and the E, I'm gonna keep going. So on the Beatles recording, they had a bunch of musicians on different instruments and they told them you have so many bars to get from the lowest note on your instrument to the highest note on your instrument. So they were going at different paces. They were, it's really dissonant. To try to reproduce that on piano, I'm just gonna, once I get up to that E, I'm gonna start doing octaves here, but like really messy octaves. And I'm just gonna start moving up in half steps. But I'm gonna hit other notes along the way. Maybe let's do some sevenths instead of octaves. Maybe build the energy a little bit. You can do this however you feel, it's pretty fun. But when I get up to about this E octave here, then I'm gonna stop and then hit that final super satisfying chord. Woo! So that is, I'm just doing it as big as I can. It sounds like that's the voicing on the recording. I'm doing super low E octaves here. I'm gonna do this E here, the A flat here, the B here, and the E here. So if your hands can't stretch all that way, you can totally just do three notes there. But the more notes you can get in there, the better to just such an epic ending to the song and then of course you just let that ring out and then the song is over okay thank you for sticking with me i'm going to play a complete cover now so you can see how all those parts fit together in the full arrangement if you haven't subscribed i would really appreciate it if you would subscribe click the bell so you'll know when i put out more tutorial videos like this give it a like and keep the request coming in the comments here's my version of a day in the life
Woke up, fell out of bed, dragged a comb across my head. Found my way downstairs and drank a cup. And looking up, I noticed I was late. Found my coat and grabbed my hat. Made the bus in seconds flat. Found my way upstairs and had a smoke. And somebody spoke and I went into a dream.